In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to make an animation of a sphere morphing into a wine glass. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.78a. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. To make it easier to see the scale and location of the objects that we'll be adding, switch from Perspective to Orthographic View by pressing 5 on the number pad. When we render the final animation, it will be in perspective view. Now delete the cube by right-clicking on it to make sure that it's selected, then press X. We're going to add a sphere at the center, so make sure that the 3D cursor is centered by pressing Shift-S and then select Cursor to Center. Now press Shift-A and add a UV sphere. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view and then zoom in. To create the morphing effect, we're going to be using shape keys. Shape keys allow us to define multiple locations for vertices and then animate between them. In our case, we have a sphere morphing into a wine glass. Both the sphere and the wine glass will share the same vertices, but the positions of the vertices will be different. So click the Object Data button. In the Shape Key section, click the plus button to add a shape key. Rename this key Sphere. Now click the plus button again to add a shape key for the wine glass. Name it Glass. Next we're going to modify the position of the vertices to make the wine glass. We'll also be adding additional vertices. So make sure that the shape key for the glass is selected and then press Tab for edit mode. Now switch to wireframe mode so that we can select vertices on the front and back at the same time. Then press A once or twice until all the vertices are deselected. Then press B for border select and select all of the vertices above the center of the sphere. Next we're going to scale by a negative value on the Z axis which will invert the vertices. So press S, then Z, then minus 1, then enter. Then scale down in size by pressing S, then 0.9, then enter. Next we're going to move these vertices down until this row of vertices is even with this row of vertices. All of these selected vertices will form the inside of the wine glass. Now select only this top row of vertices on the inside of the glass. To do that, hold down the Alt key and right click on an edge. Then drag the vertices up until they're even with the top of the glass. Now scale the whole glass up in size on the Z axis by pressing A twice to select all. Then press S, then Z, then 1.5, then Enter. Next, we're going to select the vertices around the top outside edge of the glass. So I'll rotate the view so that I can see the top. Now hold down the Alt key and right click on the top outside edge. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view. Now enable proportional editing and set the fall off to smooth. This will allow us to affect not only the selected vertices, but nearby vertices as well. Now press S to scale. When you do this, you'll see a white circle which defines the area that will be used for proportional editing. All of the vertices within the circle will be affected. You can see this if I move the mouse. The size of the circle can be changed by using the scroll wheel. So set its size to be just past the bottom vertices. Then enter 0.4 and press Enter. We're done with proportional editing, so disable it. Now we're going to make the stem and the base of the wine glass. So press A to deselect all. Then zoom in to the bottom of the glass. Now press B for border select and select these outside vertices. Then zoom back out. Now we're going to extrude these vertices to make the stem of the glass. So press E, then 0.2, then Enter. Then scale down in size by pressing S, then 0.25, then Enter. Then extrude by pressing E, then 0.2, then Enter. Then press E again, then 0.9, then 
then enter. Now we'll make the base. So extrude by pressing E, then point 0.1, then enter. Then again press E, then point 0.1, then enter. Then scale up in size by pressing S, then 10, then enter. Then press E, then point 0.05, then enter. Then press E again, then point 0.01, then enter. Then to flatten the bottom, we'll scale on the Z axis. So press S, then Z, then 0, then enter. Next we're going to add the wine in the glass. So switch to solid view. Then switch to face select mode so that only faces will be selected. Then press A once or twice until nothing is selected. Rotate the view until the inside bottom of the glass can be seen and zoom in. Now press B for border select and select the bottom faces. Now we're going to add the next four rows of faces to the selection. So hold down both the Shift and Alt keys and right click an edge between two faces in the first row. Then hold down Shift and Alt and right click the second row. Then hold down Shift and Alt and right click the third row. Then hold down Shift and Alt and right click the fourth row. We want to be able to easily select these same faces later, so we're going to add them to a vertex group. So in the vertex groups area, click the plus button to add a vertex group. Name it Wine. Then click the Assign button to add the selected faces to the group. Now we're going to add the top surface of the wine. So switch to Edge Select Mode. We're going to select only the top edge of the wine. So hold down the Alt key and right click the center of one of the top edges. Now press E to extrude. We're going to extrude these edges to the same location as the original ones, so just right click. Then scale them down in size by pressing S, then .95, then Enter. Now press F to add a face. Then click the Assign button to add this selection to the vertex group. Now we're going to add a little more geometry near the boundary between the glass and the wine. This will make the final render look better. So add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl R, then position the cursor here and left click. Then slide the loop near the top of the wine and left click again. Then click the Remove button to make sure that these edges are not part of the vertex group. Now press A twice to select all. Then click the Shading UVs tab and then click the Recalculate Normals button. This will make the glass and wine reflections look correct. Next, let's position the glass so that the bottom is even with the bottom of this sphere. So press 1 on the number pad for front view and zoom out. Then in the Shape Keys section, select Sphere so that we can see its location. Now select the glass again and move it up until the bottom is even with the bottom of the sphere. Now press Tab for Object Mode. You'll notice that in Object Mode, the object is shaped like a sphere even though the glass shape key is selected. That's because the shape key value is set to zero. As this value is increased, the shape will become more like a wine glass. A little later, we're going to set keyframes for this value to create a morphine effect. Now let's make the glass smoother, so add a subdivision surface modifier. Set the view and render values to 2. Then click the smooth button. This is a good time to save what I have so far, so from the File menu I'll select Save As. I'm going to name it Glass.Blend. Next we're going to add a surface for the glass to sit on. So press Shift A and add a Mesh Plane. Then drag it to the bottom of the glass. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. Now let's set the material for it. 
So click the Material button and then click New. Then come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. Keep the Diffuse Material and set the color to a hex value of B9, B3, A6. Now we'll set up the light source, so select the lamp from the outliner. I'm going to keep it in its default position, so all we need to do is to set up the type, size, and strength. So click the Object Data button if it's not already selected, and verify that the point lamp is selected. Then set the size to 2. Now click the Use Nodes button and set the strength to 5000. Now we'll set up the material for the wine glass, so select it by right-clicking on it. Then click the Material button if it's not already selected, and then click New. Name this material glass. We'll keep the diffuse shader. During the animation, while the sphere is morphing into a wine glass, the material will be changing from a glossy material to a glass material. To set this up, switch to the Compositing Screen Layout, and click the Shader Nodes button. These are the nodes that control the material for the wine glass. We don't need the Properties panel, so you can close it from the View menu by selecting Properties. Down in the 3D View window, I'll switch to Rendered View so that we can see the changes as they're made. Next, set the diffuse color to black. We're going to mix in a glossy shader to make the material reflective, so press Shift A and add a mix shader. Drop it on the connection coming out of the diffuse shader. Then press Shift A and add a glossy shader. Connect it to the bottom mix shader input and set the roughness value to 0 0.02. Next, press Shift A and select Input, and then Layer Weight. Connect the facing output to the Mix Shaders Factor input. This will control how the diffuse and glossy shaders are blended together. The surface areas that are angled away from the camera will use more of the glossy shader than the surface areas that are angled toward the camera. For the blend value, I'm going to use 0.15. You may want to experiment with different values if you would like to have a different look. This material will be used by the sphere before it morphs into a wine glass. Now we'll mix in a glass material that will be used after it morphs into a wine glass. So press Shift A and add a mix shader. Drop it on the output of the other mix shader. Then press Shift A and add a glass shader. Connect it to the bottom mix shader input. Make sure that the color is set to the maximum value, which is a hex value of FF, FF, FF. This will give the glass material good transparency. Then set the roughness value to 0 0.01. Adding a little roughness will allow reflections from the light source to be seen. Now when I move the mix shader's factor input from 0 to 1, the wine glass material changes. Later we're going to add keyframes to this value to control the material. Next, let's set up the material for the wine. So down in the 3D view window, switch to solid view. Then press tab for edit mode. Then click the object data button. This is the vertex group that we made earlier. We're going to use it to select the vertices associated with the wine. So press A to deselect all. Then with the wine group selected, click the Select button. Now click the Material button. You may need to expand the panel on the right to bring the Material button into view. Currently, the wine glass is only using a single material, so click the Plus button to add a new material. Then click the small button next to the new button and select Glass. Then click this plus button to make a copy. Name the copy Wine. 
Now click the Assign button so that the wine will use this new material. I'll switch back to Rendered View so that we can see the changes as they're made. Next, set the glass color to a hex value of 9E0500. The diffuse color will be used before the morphin effect when the object is a sphere. We're going to change this color to give the sphere two colors. That way, when the sphere rolls into position at the beginning of the animation, it will look like it's rolling instead of sliding. We'll change it to the same color that the glass shader is using. So click the diffuse color, and then click the small button that looks like a dropper. Then move the dropper to the wine color and left click. Next we're going to set up the animation. So move the mouse cursor into the 3D window and press tab to switch to object mode. Then expand the panel on the right until the frame number can be seen. I'll resize the 3D window as well. This is what the wine glass will look like when the morphine is finished. In the animation, the morphine will be complete at frame 100, so set the frame number to 100. Now we'll set some keyframes, so make sure that the mix shader's factor value is set to 1. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now select the glass material and verify that the factor value is set to 1. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Next, click the Object Data button. With the glass shape key selected, verify that the shape key value is set to 1. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now set the frame number to 50. This is where the sphere starts morphing into a wine glass. So set the shape key value to 0. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now click the Material button and set the Factor value to 0. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Next, click the Wine material and set the Factor value to 0. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now I'll scrub the timeline between frames 50 and 100 so that we can see the morphine effect. Next, switch to the default screen layout. Now I'll scrub the timeline to a little past frame 80. You'll notice that a band appears around the top of the glass. This band is part of the inside of the glass protruding through to the outside. This can cause the final rendering to look unusual, so we're going to improve it by shrinking down the inside of the glass while it's morphing. To do that, We'll add another shape key, so click the Object Data button. Then in the Shape Keys section, click the plus button to add another shape key. Name this shape key Inside. Now with the Inside shape key selected, press Tab for Edit Mode. We're going to select the vertices that make up the inside of the glass, so click the Vertex Select button so that we can select vertices. Then switch to wireframe mode so that we can select vertices on the front and back at the same time. Then press A once or twice until all the vertices are deselected. Then press B for border select and select all the vertices above the center of the sphere. Next we'll scale it down in size, so press S, then 0.7, then Enter. Now switch to solid view and then press Tab for Object Mode. Now when I increase the value of the Inside Shape Key, you can see how it affects the wine glass. This Shape Key is only going to be applied during the morphing process, so let's set up the keyframes for it. So move to frame 50. Then set the Shape Key value to 0. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now move to frame 75. Set the Shape Key value to 1. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now move to frame 100. 
set the shape key value to 0, then right click it and select insert keyframe. Now when I scrub the timeline, the inside of the glass no longer protrudes through to the outside. Next we're going to set up the sphere to roll into place at the beginning of the animation. So move the frame number to 50. This is the final position of the sphere after it finishes rolling. Now press N to open the properties panel. We're going to set keyframes for the sphere's current location and rotation. So right click in the location section and select insert keyframes. Then right click in the rotation section and select insert keyframes. Now move to frame 1. We're going to move the sphere to its starting location. It will rotate one full revolution, so set the Y location value to 6.28. I arrived at this value by multiplying the diameter of the sphere by pi. I used a diameter value of 2, which I got from rounding off the dimension values. This value that I'm using is not exact, because I rounded the values for the diameter and pi, but it's a good approximation that accounts for one full rotation of the sphere. Since the sphere will rotate by one full turn, set the X rotation value to minus 360. Now set the keyframes by right clicking in the location section and selecting insert keyframes. Then right click in the rotation section and select insert keyframes. Now when I scrub the timeline, the sphere rotates into position and then morphs into a wine glass. I'm going to save what I have so far. Next, let's set up the camera view. So press 0 on the number pad. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view by putting a check mark next to lock camera to view. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. We're done with the Properties panel, so press N to close it. Now select the camera in the Outliner. Then click the Object Data button if it's not already selected. Here you can change the focal length that the camera uses. I'm going to use a value of 50, which is just my personal preference for this scene. Now I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. This is what it looks like when I scrub the timeline. Now I'll switch to rendered view. To make it look more interesting, let's add a pattern to the background. This will give the wine glass something to reflect. To change the background, click the world button and then click use nodes. Then click the small button on the right side of the color and select Checker Texture. So that we can see the background as the changes are made, I'll press 1 on the number pad for front view. Also, to see the pattern that we just applied, I need to switch from orthographic view to perspective view by pressing 5 on the number pad. Now change the scale to 1. Then to increase the contrast, Change color number 2 to black. For color number 1, we're going to use another texture. So click the small button on the right side of color number 1 and select the brick texture. Then set the brick texture's color number 2 to black. Now I'll press 0 on the number pad to switch to camera view. Now we have some reflections in the glass. Now let's finish setting up the animation, so click the Render button, and then open the Sampling section. This is where we set the number of render samples. The larger this value is, the better the final animation will look, but the longer it will take to render. The sphere will look OK with a render value of 100, but to make the wine glass look good, I want to use a value of 250. So instead of rendering the whole animation with a render value of 250, which will take a long time to render, I'm going to set keyframes for the number of render samples. 
This will reduce the total render time. To do that, set the frame number to 1. Then set the number of render samples to 100. Now right click the value and select Insert Keyframe. Next, set the frame number to 50. This is where the morphing begins. With the number of render samples still set to 100, right click the value and select Insert Keyframe. Now, 100 render samples will be used from frame 1 to 50 while the sphere is rolling. Next, set the frame number to 100. This is where the morphing is complete. Set the render value to 250 and then right click the value and select Insert Keyframe. Now the number of render samples will increase from 100 to 250 while the sphere is morphing into a wine glass. If I scrub the timeline, you can see the number of render samples increase between frame 50 and 100. Sometimes you can get unwanted bright speckles in the rendered image. These are sometimes referred to as fireflies. To help prevent this, I'm going to set the clamp indirect value to 1. The animation is going to be 150 frames long. After the morphing is complete at frame number 100, the wine glass will remain unchanged for the last 50 frames. So we're only going to render the first 100 frames and then use the video sequence editor to extend frame 100 for an additional 50 frames. This will significantly speed up the total render time of the animation. So for now, set the end frame value to 100. Now come up to the output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. Click on this button to select a directory, and then navigate to a directory where you would like to save your animation. When we render the animation, we're going to be creating 100 separate image files. So I'm going to create a new empty subdirectory for them by clicking this button. I'll name it Glass. Now I'll select the new Glass directory and click Accept. Next, click here to set the file format. If you choose a movie format, then you will end up with a single movie file. If you choose an image format, then the animation will be rendered as individual images. In our case, we're rendering 100 frames, so we'll end up with 100 images. This is what we want to do. Then after rendering the individual images, we'll extend the last image for an additional 50 frames, and then use Blender's Video Sequence Editor to combine the images into a single movie file. So select the PNG image format. As a final step before rendering the animation, let's recalculate the normals of the wine glass. I've had cases where I've set the direction of the normals early in a project, and then for whatever reason they were different toward the end of the project. So to recalculate the normals, switch to Solid View. Then right click the glass to select it and press Tab for edit mode. Now click the Object Data button and select the Shape key for the glass. Then press A once or twice until everything is selected. Then from the Shading UVs tab, click Recalculate. Now press Tab for Object Mode. Now we're ready to render the animation, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. To render the animation, click the Render button, and then click on the Animation button. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the Escape key, or you can click the X next to the Render Progress bar. Now I'll pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now. It took my computer about 50 minutes. Now let's use the Video Sequence Editor to combine the rendered images into a single movie file. So switch to the Video Editing Screen Layout. This is the Video Sequence Editor. To add the images, press Shift-A and select Image. Then navigate to the directory that we created earlier. There should be one image for each frame. Now press A to select all of the images, 
and then click Add Image Strip. If the Properties panel is not open, press N to open it. Position the image strip by setting the start frame to 1. Now let's add a single image, so press Shift A and select Image. Then select the last image which is named 0100.png. Then click Add Image Strip. We want this image to start at frame 101 and last for 50 frames. So set the start frame to 101 and set the length to 50. Now when I scrub through the video, the image strip plays until frame 100 and then the single image is used for the last 50 frames. Next we're going to convert the animation into a single movie file. So switch back to the default screen layout. Down at the bottom of the render panel, open the section named Post Processing. Make sure that there is a check mark next to Sequencer. With this checked, Blender will use the images that we set up in the Video Sequence Editor instead of rendering the images again. The complete video will be 150 frames long, so set the end frame number to 150. Now scroll up to the Output section and click here to set the movie file format. There are multiple movie formats that you can choose from. I'm going to use Aug Theora. Since I've made changes in the Video Sequence Editor, I'm going to save the project again. Next, click the Animation button. This will be fast because we're not rendering the individual images again. Instead, we're converting the images from the Video Sequence Editor into a single movie file. This is the final frame in the animation. If you want to return to the 3D view, then click this button and select 3D View. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation, or you can press Ctrl F11. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. Now if you open up Windows File Explorer or something equivalent, you can navigate to your movie file. This directory has all the individual images that were rendered as well as the single movie file. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can now play your video. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.